Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and uh, we're dealing with some new tech today. Uh, Zoom has decided to do a little update, so that's a little fun. But I happen to have my... It took you a while to find the record button. <laughs> they... Okay, so, so people who don't know, people who don't podcast or YouTube or do use Zoom or anything like that, they used to have a pretty cool interface where record was a button right in the front. You just hit record and you start talking, and then when you're done, you hit end recording. Now they've moved it. Like it's on the screen, but it's like <clears throat> way over here on the right, or you got to click more and you got, it's a whole thing. It's like, <sighs> I know we're trying to get like cooler and hipper and with the millennials and all that. And I, and I said that like a guy who's 50, but still, come on, there's a certain thing. Anyway, the voice you heard in the background is not me throwing my voice. I actually have a very beautiful parrot right next to me. I'm just <laughs> 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 she needs a cracker once in a while. Uh, <clears throat> no, it's got <clears throat> Dolores. My wife Dolores is with me today. Uh, she wanted to be on the camera, and then she said, "I'm not being on the camera." So it was kind of this camera thing. So you guys can vote up or down whether you want her on the camera or off the camera, because she seems like she's going to be, um, I don't know, swayed possibly. What all of our tens listeners? of listeners? T yeah, two listeners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you see these kind of gems you can't see from her on the side because she's over here like giggling. Anyway, my wife Dolores is with us. Um, she's been kind enough to to join us the last couple of weeks, and that's great because we've been super, super busy. This we have pa been. This yeah. past weekend, um, we decided to take a little trip. I'm going on a trip. I well, we talked, we talked about it a little bit before we ended the last podcast after we came back from Disney Springs. Yeah. So we decided... We decided we wanted to go see a Braves game, and the Atlanta Braves are kind of close. I mean, yeah, I get it. Yeah, they're not. I mean, it's not like I would want to do that on a day trip. You wouldn't want to, like, get up on a Saturday, like, super early and... We did that. Drive to there. We did that. See a game, and then drive home. No, 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 no. 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 It's, a little, it's a little too far for that. Now, if it was a couple of hours, maybe, but four hours, actually, it's a little four and some change, right? What if it was like a afternoon game? <clears throat> like if the game was supposed to start at like one? I don't know. Because then we, uh, very we could possibly. be home by bedtime. I mean, essentially, right? Possibly. Possibly. Be a whole lot of driving. I, I don't want to drive all that. Well, I mean, I get, yeah, that'd be what, eight hours of driving <laughs> in one day? Yeah. Or actually a little more a little because more. it's a little, it's a little more than four hours yeah. from here. Um. It, it would be a little different now because we've we've actually spent some time walking around the battery, which is the I'm not really sure what you would describe that as food. N yeah, it is food it's and knickknacks and doodads and shops shops. And now Atlanta has done a fantastic job. I do not know how old it's called Truist, the right? Um, yeah, Truist Park. Truist Park is the stadium where the Braves play. And I did read that Truist, T-R-U-I-S-T, -T, is a bank. It actually bought out Sun Trust Bank, I do believe I read. And I'm not sure when they built that stadium. It's a very nice stadium. It's beautiful. Matter of fact, it was my very first Major League Baseball game. It says that the ballpark for Atlanta, the new one, opened up in 2017. It was previously named the Sun Trust Park, and then the bank was renamed after Sun Trust became Truist Bank. In 2020. So, yeah, I had read that Truist had bought out years. Sun SunTrust. Yeah. So they renamed the stadium. But they've done a really good job. And now, mind you, I've not been to any other major league stadiums, so I don't know what to compare it to. It, it was extremely nice. There's a lot of the area around the stadium is actually called the Battery. You can mm -hmm. Google that. It actually shows up. It's got a lot of different restaurants, a lot of little unique type shops that sells the it braves jerseys hats things like that there's a couple of um uh, i would guess like maybe like you said a little just a little unique shops mm -hmm. a, a lot to do i mean we spent <clears throat> we got to town we actually opted to stay we went with uh, two other couples and so there was six of us we got our seats i mean we did not pay a tremendous pr price for the seats we were not going for the best view we really wanted um, the more or less just the experience. We had great seats. We were sitting in like the third deck, I think it was. Mm -hmm. We were able to get front row of the third deck because I am short and didn't want to have to try to look over anybody's head. That worked really well. 
And I was extremely impressed with the actual the actual stadium. I have like I say I've never been in one before. Did not realize that there was going to be a museum there. Yeah. I don't know if all ball fields do that or maybe because Truist Stadium is newer. I think that's a newer thing. Um I think that that a lot of the major sports teams have realized that fans want to go for a full experience. They don't right. want to just go see the game. And honestly, if you give fans a fuller experience, they're more likely to spend money. And that's the big pursuit. How do we get them here to spend more money? Well, I mean, I realize that I would think, and I have been to a couple of major um, NFL football games over the years. I have never been to an NBA game. This was my first major league baseball game. And the comment we were all, the six of us were talking, I don't know why every city that has a stadium like that doesn't have that, like that battery park. Yeah. That is extremely smart. I mean, they've got it blocked off where you, where you cannot drive cars down, to, but to a certain point. A lot of parking garages. We opted not to, to do the park in a garage and then get stuck in traffic trying to get out. We stayed walking distance. And yep. it was, and that, I mean, and that was fantastic. And staying walking distance is a little more pricey than if we just stayed further out, but then we also had the convenience of not having to drive and pay for parking there. Right. Again, we could just walk over, which was kind of nice. Um, we stayed at the Renaissance, which is a decent walk. It's not terrible. It's, it was, I want to say, I think just it says under, it's just under a mile, like it was, yeah, it was a little seven under, miles or something so, like that. Yeah. And it's, they got a nice walking path and uh, there's a bridge that goes over a highway. It was a little tricky finding where the bridge was, but luckily we had some friends that went the day before and they kind of navigated that part for us. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the sense that we were staying the night and it wasn't like we had to rush. Yeah. So we could basically just stroll and go in shops and go, oh, what's in here? Now, a lot of it was just window shopping for us. We didn't really want to buy anything, but we'd. We well, before take a the minute. game, there was no reason we didn't want to buy anything because you didn't want to have to take it into the game and hope. Yeah. yeah, but also like there wasn't anything like we were like, oh, I got to have this. I came here just to buy this thing. No. It was just looking. Um, They had a Mizuno store, you know, really nice looking shoes. And we were able to yeah. ooh and ah over the really expensive shoes and uh, kind of soak up their air conditioning. Uh, that was the biggest reason I think we were stopping in the stores. Yes. It was because extremely, it was, I'm glad it, it did not hot. rain because I do know that major league baseball games do not go on, you know, that the rain will definitely cancel them or delay them. delay them. Yeah, No rain. We had beautiful weather. And although it was like, well, I think the high was 88. It sure felt like it was yeah. 188. <laughs> it was a seats. humid, non-air moving 88. Yes. Yeah, it was, uh, Danny looked at me one time and he goes, it is really hot i yeah, said yeah was... they call it hot lana for a reason yeah. <laughs> yeah. no no breeze blowing at all no. but i was extremely impressed i had no idea going into it what it was going to be like it, I, it was great yeah. I, I thought the stadium was absolutely gorgeous on the inside so many options of food uh, expensive food but <laughs> but it's yeah still... but also like i was like everything flowed really easily I've been to games before where you wait for a hot dog and you stand in line for a good 20, 30 minutes and you're like, when is this line going to move? And of course, now that like self-checkout is kind of a thing everybody yeah. does, they have a, they have like an assembly line type thing where you get in line and you grab what you want and you go up and you pay a little kiosk and then you're on your way away. So, I mean, you know, yes, the prices were a little high, but that's kind of what you expect to pay at a park. Um, they're not a little <clears> high. They're a lot high. You wanted a hot dog. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying, I just don't understand. Your thing was, I want to go to a ballpark and I want to have a ballpark hot dog. Yes. I've always heard they're, they're the best. And I was like, okay. And sure enough, we found a ballpark hot dog and it was like the size of my arm. It was, it like, was, it was, it was, but it was good. It was good. It yeah. was uh, $14 good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. <laughs> hey, have your hot dog. Oh no. I was yeah. extremely like, I, like I said, I've never, I ne I've watched games before, but now the games don't show you what, every, everything that's going on in the stadium. Yeah. I mean, the stadium, I don't know. They kept, how, they kept everybody busy. They kept everybody very busy yeah. in, in between, in between batters. Mm -hmm. Now the question I do have, and I started to ask this while we were sitting there Saturday evening, but I was kind of didn't because I figured everybody would think I was a dummy. The organ music. Yeah. Is that a real organ or yeah. is that, I mean, I realized maybe years ago they were probably real organs. Are they still? No, no, that's not like you'd see in cathedrals in like, you know, Notre Dame movies. It's, it's an organ, but it's like an electric organ. Oh, okay. But I'll... someone's playing. 
Oh, okay. So I didn't know if maybe somebody was playing or if somebody, or if that's all recorded and they just hit a button. Well, no, because I'm out. the only way I could tell it was, it wasn't recorded was they were like changing up the speed. Oh, okay. Because it was times. Yeah, remember, but you remember can the do that guy? on a, I mean, well, I guess not if it's we had, They had the one batter from the Marlins who hit and he took forever to get back to the plate and he was like dragging it off and he was like, do, 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 do. he just made it longer and longer and longer. I was like, okay, he's playing it back there. Somebody's playing the music. But also, like, playing music that was popular on the organ was kind of cool because we were all, like, playing, like, music of, what is that song? What is that song? And you hear somebody say what it was. And you're like, oh, okay. And it all had something to do with the name of the person. Like, it was all in correlation. One guy's yeah. name was Butler. So they had, like, or no, not Butler, Baker. So they had, like, do you know the Muffin Man? Oh, he's a baker. I get it. You know. And then they had uh, just a couple of different hidden things there with the songs. And we'd all correlate the music. Get it? You didn't do that? You were on the other side. You couldn't hear me. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't. I don't think I picked up on that. I, me, I was, and, me and Danny <laughs> were playing the game with the guy behind us. We were trying to guess the music. <laughs> I was extremely, I could say, I was extremely impressed with how on spot they were with every single time something happened. I mean, yeah. you for a strikeout, you get, no, yeah, for a strikeout, they had the, the fireworks that shot out from the the um yeah. jumbotron i did think that they did a fantastic job of using the camera mm -hmm. on the jumbotron to pick out different people in in the crowd because people really really enjoy that i oh, mean yeah. people get behind seeing themselves on the jumbotron sure and that was probably that was by far I looked the over and you were even doing the selfie yes. thing you were like look everybody dance and i was like uh no i don't think well of course now with the you know with technology what it is they had this qr code that would show up on the jumbotron you you know you pick you use your camera get the qr code and it would stream you live up on the jumbotron of course they had to pick your live feed at the time yeah but yeah that that was pretty cool and i think Two people nailed the Jumbotron. It was the lady in the banana suit. Well, they kept showing her, yeah. That was pretty funny. And then, of course, the guy doing the weird robot arms. He was doing, Actually, the, he was doing the weird he robot arms. He was doing arms the dance. Tommy Hawk chop. He was doing a bunch of stuff. It was crazy. He was on fire. Yes, that they did a great job of it, of actually keeping the crowd in the game. And lots of stuff with little kids, which you hear the whole audience, oh, it'd be yeah. this adorable little kid. They did the something. hug cam, the kiss yeah. cam. I mean, yeah, it was, it was really... <laughs> Way they even put it on opposing fans next to each other, and they're like, uh-uh, no. no. <laughs> now, I have, like I say, I've watched baseball. I mean, I wouldn't say I've been like an avid fan that just watched every last single pitch, but I've watched some of the World Series games. I did not know, I don't know when this started, but now that they have the new rule of the how long it takes to pitch, you only have a certain amount of time. This year. That is that's cool. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. That has def. I, I've not watched any, or I've not really paid attention to it on TV. I've watched a couple games here and there when you had them on in the background. Just hey, what's the score? Who's mm -hmm. winning the Braves? Whatever. But um, yeah, that definitely makes the game a lot faster. Plus, I don't know if you noticed, whenever they would change pitchers, they only or change batters, they only added ten extra seconds for you to get to the plate. Yes. So you, when that counter, I mean, that person's out. Okay, good. 30 seconds. They get up to the plate. They have speed. They have definitely sped up those games. Between pitches. The, the pitch is caught. Okay. Pitcher's got the ball. 20 seconds. Start now. I mean, it's, it moves. Yeah. The Braves were playing the Florida Marlins. We knew that ahead of time because we had bought the tickets, of course. They were in town for, they played Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. And um, we it were was, told. We this is going to be a great game because the Braves are probably going to win because the Marlins suck. And they won Friday night. We heard that because our buddies, uh, Cheryl and Phil, went the night before and got to see the fireworks go off above the stadium well, from they, their room. They, they didn't, yeah, they, they didn't go to the game, but they knew they won. And if they won four to two. Um, now, our game, I will have to say, was, was close the whole game. Our game was close the whole game. They only lost by one run, and uh -huh. our game actually went down two, they, runs. two runs. No, our, you're right. One run. I'm going to get the wrong one. Yep. They, they only lost by one run, but our game went down to, I mean, they, and don't get me wrong. I say I'm not, it didn't matter to me one way or the other. I wanted them to win, of course. Sure. But if they didn't, it was okay. I was going for the experience of being in the stadium and everything, but it went down. It went down to the last pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not like when they lost, they didn't lose by a, 
you know, by multiple runs or anything like that. They actually had a chance. They could have won it right down to the very end. Yeah. We stayed. I mean, I had no problem at all. I did not want to walk away from there before. I didn't see a lot of people leave. I didn't like, either. Normally you see like after the seventh <clears throat> inning stretch, yeah. the crowd starts to thin out because they want to beat the traffic. But I it mean, was a good game. It was an exciting game. I didn't game. see a whole lot of people leave. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I say, it was it was great. I, and I'm glad we saw that game versus last night's game because yesterday they, afternoon's game they got blown out seven yes. to nothing. <laughs> so I just looked on the website. Uh, apparently, they played four games. They also they oh, also okay. played on Thursday, so they won two games, and the Marlins won two games. So I guess that's kind of okay. Well, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, you might as well split it. I guess that's better than losing them all, right? But yeah, yeah. So anyway, but like I say, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I would I would go back. I would easily go back and see another one. The experience was great. I would like to go when the weather's not quite as hot. So do you think you would be up for a possible Chicago Cubs game? Yes. In September? Yeah. Okay. Because we have the possibility, uh, secret time, we have a possibility of going to a Cubs game in September. So would there be a, a, video, a video going along with that and a podcast about that? Well, so, I would love to go to. I, I like I say, I don't have a favorite. I don't either. Baseball team. I grew up watching the Braves. I mean, that was t- like you were talking about the museum. Mm-hmm. That was big for me because I grew up around Atlanta. We we actually lived in uh, the Cobb County area. Um, matter of fact, for a long time, I lived on the the Austell exit, which is the Six Flags exit, and we would go to games quite often. Um, I remember back then. Uh, my stepdad saying, "Oh, you know, the whole family can go to a game for less than twenty bucks," and I was like. Okay, I had no concept of money, but yeah, less than 20 bucks, I guess, sounded great. So we would go quite often. And I remember we moved to South Carolina in 85, 86, somewhere in that range. But we would still, like, he would just, he'd get off work on, he'd go, let's go to a race game. I'm like, what? And all of a sudden, we'd be on the road and haul butt to Atlanta, watch a game. Seventh inning, we'd leave, and he'd turn it on the radio, and we'd listen to it on the way back. And that was kind of the only way you could make it there and back in a day but we did that trip often and uh i now, grew up do watching all games i've never i mean i've seen the seven see them do the seventh inning stretch on tv mm-hmm. do all major league baseball games do this I mean, make me up to the yeah. ball game yeah why why tradition. the seventh why there's nine innings tradition but why seven how did they land on i don't know the people get tired of sitting is on it the bo- it's the bottom of the seventh right yeah. between so, the bottom and the top Right in the middle. Oh, okay. So you got to stretch. You can make it to the end. Yeah, I get that part. But you would think that they would have had it more toward the middle. But then again, I guess. I I bet it has something to do with concessions. I'm sure it has something to do with how slow that game used to progress until they put these new timers in. Maybe the seventh inning stretches so the umpires can go to the bathroom real quick. Could be. Because they're out there a lot. Yeah. Maybe that's their, hey, you guys want to run to the potty real quick? We'll take a little stretch. Yeah, and now I will have to say it was it was a lot more visible than a professional football game. Yeah, you definitely cannot see. I was the one thing I was not, that I noticed. Number one, of course, you can't see what you can see on TV as far as the pitches and the the strikes and the balls. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell that because from where I was sitting, they all look like strikes to me. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you saw the guy go whoa. You're like, but, oh, now, close to his but face. now the one thing I did not, <laughs> I did not realize until I went to actual game, they will not show any replays or they don't show any of that on that jumbotron. They don't have time. Not, well, they they don't, yeah. and I'm sure there's a reason why. Now there was a there was a couple of calls that you could hear the whole crowd boo, and of course I booed because everybody else was. But I was like, okay, I, I don't know if that was a strike or not. Was I know. that was that a bad call? I got a kick out of hearing you because because I was on the other side of you with two people in between us, and I'd hear you boo. And I'm like, Is that <laughs> holy cow? Look at her. And the next thing you're, <laughs> and I was like, go ahead, girl. I had no idea what I was booing at, but I, was I figured I was just glad you were having fun. I was like, go ahead, that's cool. I figured everybody behind the plate that in those real expensive seats, yeah. they knew the they knew what they were booing, so I just went along with them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah but yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. It mm-hmm. really was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was impressed with that stadium. Now, if we get a chance to go to Wrigley Field, whenever I've got a conference to go to in um, early September up in Chicago. And we've decided, you know, you're going to fly up about later in the week and meet me up there. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would love, I think it's in, we've looked it up and the Cubs are playing the Yankees mm-hmm. an afternoon game on that Friday. And I'll be done with my conference on Thursday afternoon. Yes. That's a good chance to see a cool game in Wrigley field, and, which is one of the oldest stadiums right. in the league. And, and I'm kind of curious how, how it compares to Atlanta because Atlanta is a newer stadium. Um, and Would Wrigley's it be an older the, stadium. Yeah. It's the second oldest in the, you know, I kind of wonder, have they done like upgrades to make it more modernized or did they just leave it like old style and go, no, people are going to like, I guess nostalgia. we're going to find out. I mean, if we get to go, of course, yeah. it will de- a lot of that will depend on weather. And well, I mean, I want to kind of make it if we can get there, if no, there's right. still tickets, we- weather's a big deal, weather's a big deal, but also too availability. Sure. If we get to go, that would be great. I mean, not even if we stay for the whole game, because sure. there's a lot we want to accomplish while we're there for just a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. But it would it would definitely be something that I would be willing to play, pay the price of a cheap ticket just mm-hmm. to be able to get inside and see what it looks like. Yeah, I agree. Plus the Yankees. I mean, I don't know anything at all about the Yankees, except for I've always heard they've always, number one, they always do well, but I've always heard just listening to people. Not always. T- people talk that they, they have a history of doing well. They pay for t- they pay for their talent. Well, well, I, I mean, I know A Rod played there, and wait a minute, somebody else. Hold on, yeah, a lot of people. But there's somebody that was okay. A Rod played there, and there was another one that was. A, this I don't is know. A fun game. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should send in recommendations of what players she thinks might have played for the Yankees. Now, yeah, no, I don't know. And there was a Jose. Con- Seiko? Didn't who did he play for the Yankees. He played, I don't know who he played. He played for somebody years ago. Yeah, he played I for, learned about Hank Aaron. The Oakland A's. Oakland A's. You know how, that's right. He played <laughs> in during the earthquake. He was playing. I was watching the Braves yeah. play the Oakland A's when the earthquake happened. Yeah. We talked about that this he's, past week. He's one of the few players to ever openly say, yeah, I did steroids. We all did steroids. And they were like, what? You can't say that. He's like, I just did. <laughs> I've heard of the name Hank Aaron, of course. Anybody that's been alive, I mean, it knows of the name Hank Aaron. I did not know he played. I honestly didn't think about the fact that he played for the Braves. I don't. Do you know the date that he broke the record? No. The only reason I know it is because it's two dates I should remember. It's my mom's birthday, the year I was born. Okay, so it's all. It's April eighth, seventy four. Seventy four. Hmm, okay. Yep. I saw that on the, on the statue out front of Fulton County Stadium when I was a kid, and I thought, well, that's a weird coincidence. I wonder if my mom was pregnant with me and, and like saw the game on TV or something, but they didn't have it on TV back then. Now, that is also, that's the same statue that is now in mm-hmm. Truist Park. Yep, they moved inside. it. Oh, it's, 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 it's really nice. It's impressive. It's very impressive. Yeah. It's massive, and of course, it being on the inside. You said years ago it used to be outside, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge statue a like a bronze statue of mm-hmm. him they've done like i said they've done a really good job of it i mean it talked about the history of the braves from day one what they originally started out as their names how their name how they've changed and all through the years yep. but um yeah that i would i would recommend anybody that goes to that to see a braves game to go early enough to take time to look through this look around the stadium for me it was really cool because they had a a special box for the early early 80s where they had uh, Dale Murphy's picture on the front of a Sports Illustrated magazine. And I remember watching Dale Murphy back in the day. He was my guy. He was the big home run hitter. I did not know until I was at this museum because I didn't do any math and or statistics or look anything up. I mean, the internet didn't exist back then. And when I got older, I never really cared enough to look. But he won the home run championship like th- four years in a row. Um, Bob Horner apparently was the rookie of the year the year he came in the league. And Bob Horner used to bat third. And Dale Murphy batted cleanup. And I remember going to more than one game where Dale Murphy would crack it out of the park and then Bob Horner would come up and crack it out of the park right behind him. And I'm like, holy cow, this is awesome. But my my uncle, uh, Uncle Danny, uh, looked like Bob Horner. He had the same curly blonde hair, and he was a big dude. And I was like, kind of looks like my uncle at bat, man. Look at him go. So, I mean, it, it was really cool for me to see. They had Bob Horner's bat from 1986 when he hit the four-run Horner. And I, I was like, I think I was at that game. I think I really remember going to that. Um, we got to see. We we actually they hit, we got to see a home run. I mean, they oh, a yeah. home run was hit during the game. The couple stadium, no, just one. A couple of home runs were hit. Yeah, not one. all by us. Well, well, yeah. I mean, only one by <laughs> by the Braves. 
the stadium goes freaking crazy <laughs> with the, I mean, the jumbotron, the chop. <laughs> the chop, I mean, and the, the guy, I, I was extremely impressed with the, now, the guy with the big drum. When they were doing the chop, I looked over at Phil because Phil's a huge Florida State fan. And I was like, is he going to do it? And he looked at me, he goes. No, I think he did a little bit, but he said that only only He's because like, this ain't Florida State yeah. chop. This is something I'm not doing that for this. Yeah, I could of just course, see it now, in his eyes. I've He's watched, like, oh, man. You know, we watched some of those World Series games when the Braves won. Oh, yeah. What, 21? I mean, they just won the World Series not too yeah. long ago. And, of course, the stadium was not like that saturday night i sure, mean sure but um now i was like i was just in, amazed with how some of the seats did not i thought oh my gosh there's not there's not a lot of people at this game but i mean by the time it got the sun went down that's because we went in right after the place opened. i guess maybe that's why i mean but it, once the game was going there was it was pretty full well there's like the one part of the stadium it's, what is it like left field Left field was like right in the sun until the sun went down oh, yeah. behind the stadium. And once the sun kind of got down far enough, it, it it filled up even more. And I'm sure maybe those people might have been standing in the shade a little bit because oh, yeah. it was extremely hot. Yep. But yeah, that home run, the stadium was full when that home well, run was Andy, hit. He, there's a section over there in, in left field called the the Hank Aaron uh, home run yeah. section. And that's where the guy hit the home run. I was yeah. like, well, that's kind of cool. I dig that. Yeah. Now there was a lot of foul balls. I mean, yeah. you know, I was like, okay, I don't now where we were sitting, I don't think we would have gotten one we anyway. We didn't get one our direct. We got but, one kind of our direction, but it was below us in the two hundred level. Yeah, I don't um I don't I don't want to catch a foul ball. I don't even want one to come near me because well, I'd be one of those ducking up under the seat. I always wanted to like catch one and give it to a kid or something. Because that's a big deal for the kids. I, I guess. You know. There were is. a lot of kids there. Yeah. I yeah. remember as a kid, I remember going and like we would purposely stay in the outfield because we were like Maybe we'll catch a ball. I mean, that was kind of a big deal. But now I noticed that, you know, as the game has gotten more popular and they're trying to get fans more involved, they tend to throw balls into the stands a good bit. Like if they catch a ball and it ends the inning, instead of throwing it anywhere else, they just kind of toss it up to fans, which is cool. Um, but we actually Googled it, I think, uh, watching a game one night when they were, you know, they were hitting a lot of home runs and foul balls and stuff. And I was like, I wonder how many balls they used during a game. And it said, on, on average, they used about 70 baseballs per game. Which is a lot of baseball. And see, I would have thought it would have been more than that, actually. Yeah. Well, that's average, though. That's that's quite a lot of baseballs. Because you figure there's some, they're probably doing 100. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. But I tell you, it's you definitely, when you, anytime you see any sport in, it, live, it will make you appreciate how great, how good of a job they do with broadcasting when yeah. they, when they, you know, when they broadcast a game. Well, and also. And of course, we like saw those talk, people. But you were talking about like our stadium experience. The one thing I was, I, I started watching it and I was like, oh, but on TV at home, I can see where the strike zone is and how fast yes, the ball is. And I can't see, can't see that. that. And then I started gazing around the, the stadium and I realized I was looking at the wrong, I was looking at the big TV, which is telling us the stats and whatnot. But the small TV off on the left was telling us how many, what the pitches were, yes. how fast they were. And I was like, how do they know that's a slider and that's a curve? I know. Like, that's well, the one you... thing. That was my question, too. And then I the speed the... of it. I get the speed I of it. I get the speed of it. But how do you know the difference between a, you know, a sinker and a slider? I don't know. I mean, obviously, I got, I'm not I a gotta pitcher. Ask. But... I mean, I, I got a co-worker that is a huge baseball fan. But he actually somehow, played in high school and the college. The minute they throw it, they put it up what pitch it was and how fast it was. Yes, and I'm like, because there was one that I... Holy cow. I can't even remember. That was my question, too. How, do, how does that... How do they know? I get the the miles per hour. I get it totally. How do they know? Okay. How do they know that's a slider? How do they know that's a um, four seam fastball? Uh, yeah. Four seam. Yeah. What, what the heck does that mean? I don't know. I got to ask. Maybe that's a certain way he wears his hat. No, I don't think it's got anything to do with the hat. It's got to do with his fingers. It's got to do with his hands on the ball. Yeah. But there's got to be like an AI thing watching his hand or something or watching the ball move and being like, that's what that is. So I was watching a game uh, a couple of weeks ago here in the house kind of psyching myself up for the baseball. And I remember the broadcaster saying, oh, wow, that was a screwball. I haven't seen anybody throw a screwball in years. I was like, how the heck you know it's a screwball? Because I'm watching it and they're slowing it down. I was like, I don't I don't see a difference. What are you doing? Yeah, like I said, that's the part. Yeah. That's got to be AI. I don't know. There's got to be some kind of AI tied into a camera that's like, this is what that is. Like, yeah. okay. I said, okay. I'll, have, I'll have to ask, um, like I said, I work with a guy that played in high school and college and he is a huge Braves fan. Watches every last single game. If he can't watch it, he listens to it. 
And, um, you know, matter of fact, he was at my desk first thing this morning. Yeah. And he was like, you, y'all, you know, y'all actually had a good game. And I was like, went to a good game. And I was like, yes, I enjoyed every, every pitch. I got to say. I didn't even go to the bathroom. I waited until, I mean, I did not want to get out of my seat to go yeah. to the bathroom because I didn't want to miss anything. Going to a football game, which I haven't been to a football game since, uh, God, since it's been a long time, almost 20 years, maybe. 15 oh, years. Not, I don't know. But but I mean the pace of the of the of the baseball game, maybe it's the clock, maybe it's the I don't know, it's just it's very fan friendly. Um I really enjoyed all of the game, not just the action, but actually in between. Oh yeah, they did a great because job. Because they kept doing stuff to keep you entertained. I mean, the second well, they I were mean, like doing something like changing pictures, they interacted with you with the TV and and the big TV and the camera and the fans interacting and doing activities with fans and it was fun. Yeah, doing trivia. I mean, now we went to the we went to a Florence Flamingos game. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess it's been a I don't know a couple of months ago or six weeks ago. I don't remember when it was. I want to. It was on a Friday night. Yep. We went. Tickets were cheap. The stadium is nice. Actually, we, it was a fun game. We enjoyed it. Now, I, I see now where they get the entertaining the people. You know, in between the innings. Because I I thought that was kind of odd. I thought, but I'd never been to a to a major league game before. So of course I see where the Florence Flamingos, what is it, double A, single A, whatever it is, like a league. This it's a small. Well, the division. Flamingos is a summer league. It's a small division, also. It's it's a summer league for college players. My brother told me they they play during the season and they want to stay fresh. So a lot of them play like in the summer league if they can make it. Oh, okay. Because it lets them get seen by scouts a little bit more and gets them just so they don't slow down. Um, now the picture, the picture that started the, the game Saturday night, Grant Holmes is from Conway, South Carolina. Did not know that until you told me, did not know that until my coworker, when I told him who was actually, he, we, he looked it up for me Friday when we were at work, he was like, Oh, who's going to be your starting pitcher. And when I seen actually it, when we looked, it was still too to be determined, but when he seen that it was this Wait. Grant that's a story in itself. Yeah. Friday, I went and asked my co or I was in his office and because I could say huge Braves fans got little Braves A that one of, the, you know, one of the kids at works, you know, one of the co-workers kids drew him the A and colored it on a piece of notebook paper. And it's a big A and he's got it thumbtacked to his front door. Everybody knows that Payne is a huge Braves fan. And so I was at, you know, I'd told him we were going to the game. He was excited for me to be going to the game. And so Friday I was in his office. We were just chit-chatting. I think I went down there to ask him something about work. And he was like, oh, he, who's going to, who's pitching? And I was like, I don't know who's pitching. He said, oh, let's look. So he Googles it and he, he's looking at his computer and he turns and looks at me and he, I mean, and pain is one of those. It's just got the dry sense of humor and can keep a straight face through the funniest stuff. But he goes, oh, God, y'all are going to get to see a really good pitcher. And I was like, oh, who? I'm like, not that I would have known, but I was like, oh, who? And he goes, TBD. And I was like, TBD? Oh, God, who is TBD? What does that stand for? And he goes, oh, that's the best pitcher, best pitcher ever. And then it like, like dawned on me, TBD is to be determined. And he goes, yeah, he said, that's the best pitcher ever. And I was like, oh, God, I can't believe I fell for that one. <laughs> Yeah, but I there's, did. There's so many athletes that have like initials and stuff. And you're like, wait, I haven't heard of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then when we found out that it was going to be Grant Holmes, and I don't even remember if I texted him Saturday and said it was Grant Holmes or he you texted me. You did. Oh, okay. And well, I think I looked it up to see who was yeah. playing, who was going to. The night before you said you looked it up and you're like, and I screenshot. Oh, I just seen who's starting. Yeah. And I screenshot it and I was like, you know, sent it to him and I was like, hey, Payne, are we getting a good pitcher at, for the game tomorrow night? And he said, actually, you are, you know, he told me a little bit of history about, you know, his career. Mm -hmm. And he said, he's actually from Conway, South Carolina. And he pitched, um, what about four? About five. He got four? pulled in the fifth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It says here, uh, I was just Googling some information about him. Uh, he's six foot tall, about 226. Um, he actually bats left-handed and throws right-handed. Oh, really? Yeah. But the night we watched, the pitchers weren't batting. I don't know why. Um, we had a, a designated hitter for our pitcher. Maybe the Marlins are. 
I'm not sure how that works. I, I don't know how that works. I know that one league has some be, rules and the other league has another other. Yeah, different. it used to be like one league had the pitcher's bat and the other league didn't or whatever, and it just depended on who was home game that they did it. I don't know. Whatever. But it's kind of interesting that he's kind of ambidextrous a little bit. Yeah. Um, of course, stand, standing there looking at some of – after I went to the game, and then, of course, we had walked through that little museum part. Not really museum, but I guess it is kind of uh, – you know – I had such a good time watching that game. And honestly, I did not know the first player. I mean, I saw all these jerseys and of I course, didn't either, honestly, I mean, of course I was, I saw all these jerseys with the, yeah. what was the name? The junior Acuna, Acuna junior. And I was like, okay, he's got to be a good player. He's got an awful lot of jerseys out here. And the other one that we saw a lot of jerseys was Riley. Mm -hmm. Now we did see some older. He yeah. He played. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did see some, I did see a few people with like Freeman and, um, you know, some, I saw a bunch of Dale Murphy jerseys. Yeah. Dale Murphy. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. But now after I left that game, because I have, I had remember watching like Greg Maddox and, mm -hmm. and Chipper Jones. And I wish I would have, I wish went I would have, I wish I would have went, went back. Oh then. yeah. Well, and with inflation, I mean, and them doing so well, there's no telling what those oh, I can't tickets imagine were costing they, when they yeah. were winning all the time. Um, because he, I've even heard Payne, like I say, Payne is a huge Braves fan. He's follow, he follows every last single game and you, you will hear him say, you know, if they're having a really good winning season, those tickets will get more expensive oh, yeah. as the year, go, as the season goes on. It's all about supply and demand. It depends on how well they're doing. Well, that's also how they pay out bonuses. Cause oh, if they're okay. doing well, then they earn bonuses. I mean, it kind of draws viewers. Yeah. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, I got to say that for the management of people getting in and out of the park, they did a really good job. Um, well, I like the fact that the cars, like I say, I think they've they done a the great, traffic from well, they've, getting to the people, people kind of get out of there. Well, they've blocked the traffic from driving close to that stadium period. Yeah. I mean, they have that, all that set up down there at the battery where no cars are allowed in there, which makes it a lot nicer for people trying to get out of there. You're not, trying to fight traffic I mean, you're not trying to fight like if you're trying to walk to your car you're not fighting traffic of people trying to get drive out of there yeah they've put those parking garages far enough away that it does not hinder people getting out of the stadium they've got escalators they had escalators um that were moving the people extremely fast but um yeah, and, I was impressed. And all of those little shops, the the restaurants that wanted to make money after the game made money. Yes. Um, because we, we waited actually, in line for forty five minutes. We waited in line for forty five minutes to get ice cream, uh, because there's a Jenny's ice cream. There's a Jenny's right ice there. cream right on the corner, and uh, we wanted some Jenny's ice cream because we've had Jenny's ice cream before. It's is it J E N I J E N I apostrophe S. Yeah. Started in somewhat Columbus, Ohio. It's really, really, it's really, really good. really good. They sell it in grocery stores. It's, it's really good ice cream. Yep. We knew that it was there. I had already seen that it's open, of course, until 1 a.m. on a game night. Why so not? us and about 150 other people waited in line to get, to get ice cream after the game. That was probably just the people that was behind <laughs> us. It was really so we, good. It was what? How much was the? We probably spent, what, 20 bucks? 20 bucks. We waited in line for 45 minutes to spend $20. For ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was worth it. I it mean, was it was very good. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So I'm happy. Um, I would go to another game. And I, I, I mean, it very easily. I wish, I would love, I would love to live. I would not want to live in Atlanta. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to live in Atlanta. The traffic is a nightmare. I would, I would love to live a little bit closer because we've now gone twice since May. Mm hmm. Cause we were there for a wedding or in the outskirts area in May. And then we went back this weekend. I would love to live closer with, you know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. So like Augusta. Yes. If I lived in Augusta or if we lived in Augusta, we would, we would go to Atlanta more. Yeah. I mean, there I is that. just so much to do. Well, I mean, my brother and his wife live up in the Greenville area and they say that it's only like 45 minutes for them. Yeah. That would be awesome. Or around an hour. I mean, yeah. And of course, the upstate's got all kinds of neat amenities, like winter. Yeah, <laughs> we don't really have winter here. But we checked out. We checked out yesterday morning. We googled and found a you know a a place to eat brunch. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. I mean, and just in a little strip shopping center, had great reviews. The meal was amazing. The service was great. 
Augie's. 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 If you're ever in the area, go have brunch at Augie's. Go eat anything at Augie's. Augie's was fantastic. The staff was cool. The menu was cool. The yep. food was great. Oh, that's that's right. That's the one that had, I mean, that's where we ordered the. And it had all the cool names. For, all the like, cool names on the menu. All the music. And it was like titles of music. And I was like, this is kind of neat. Yeah. I, I, we just found it just Googling where to eat brunch. And it came up and I was like, oh, I'm really glad we made this decision. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. It was a great, it was a very busy uh, weekend. I mean, Saturday and Sunday, we didn't leave here till what, 730 Saturday morning. Yeah. But it was, it was great. It was fun. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed it. We'll go back most, most definitely. Yeah. So, well, cool. I'm going to wrap this up because we've done a, we've done a podcast and I hope everybody enjoyed listening to it because uh, we enjoy doing it. Um. Thank you to everybody who listens and watches and all that stuff. And uh, you want to say the line? What? The cue the cow, baby? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Cue the cow, baby. Cue the cow. Move, baby.